complicated. You need to make sure it's the best. Absolutely, Sean. Yes? I will do you proud. Plate with some finesse. Absolutely, Yeah, Sean. and give us some love. Good luck. Thank you. Right now, all that's left is my sauce. Hello, hello, hello. Are you nervous? A little bit, you know, serving a dessert to the judges. Yeah. I'm just actually more excited. I actually started watching MasterChef with your season. Oh. And you're actually my favorite winner. So this is kind of like a double whammy for me. Oh. Like, I actually can't believe that Maybe this is happening. Maybe a good luck charm, right, Christine? Yeah. Thank you so much. I hope to do you both proud. <laughs> you got this. Looks good. Thank you. We've got two minutes and 20 seconds. Ooh. I would say I'm definitely nervous because my dessert tonight has a ton of components going into it, and my presentation takes a lot more time. Well, good, Brad. Keep going. Let me just do a final taste. I want it to be like salted caramel. I like to make my plates look more composed as opposed to just a mini layer cake. Five, four, three, two, one. Woo! I'm doing the math. There's not that many aprons left, so I'm definitely sweating a little bit right now. Let's go. I've been watching MasterChef since I was 15, and that's literally the reason why I started cooking. I just can't believe that I'm here and that I'm doing this. Like, this is my chance to start my dream, and I really want it to be true. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. How are you, young man? I'm good. My name is Fred, and for you, I have today a black vinegar and Ovaltine-infused chocolate cake with matzo mascarpone cream, caramelized white chocolate and burnt miso ganache, togarashi walnut crumble, chocolate twigs, and edible flowers. And I plated it so that way the cake looks like little cubes which represent the seeds of my dreams. That's all. That's all. And why MasterChef? I grew up as a very sort of introverted person. I had a lot of people telling me that I wasn't good enough. It made me very, very shy and often forgotten. Well, Fred, first of all, let's not even pay any mind to those knuckleheads that doubted you. All that's important is your belief in yourself. Yes. Is this your moment? This is a dish that tells my story to you guys. Wonderful. Well, guys, let's taste some of these seeds of, uh, of goodness over here. I'm in here. the mood for dessert. This is yeah. Visually, absolutely stunning. Thank you. Beautiful. But we know it's all about the flavor. You can only hope it tastes as good as it looks. Shall we? Yes. Mm, so light. Thank you. That's the black vinegar. It tenderizes wow. the crumb. This is like delicious. Serious. Thank you. This is all the superlatives you give dessert: ooey, gooey, decadent, no, but rich. It's, but it's also so smart because it's yeah. all those things, but it's not. Yeah. Because it's not oversweet. It's not heavy. It's not buttery. And I love the fact that your presentation's whimsical. It's like you. You know, you're putting flair into it, and you're allowing this dish to represent your journey. Thank you so much, Chef Ron. Mm -hmm. You know how hard it is to make desserts like this, even in restaurants? We really struggle with desserts that are flavorful and light, mm -hmm. so people can really enjoy them even after eating. I can't stop eating this personally. <laughs> Gentlemen, insane. It's gone. You know, and one of the quandaries that we find ourselves in, more times than not, Fred, is that we struggle with making decisions. <laughs> and I think that says it all right there. I guess there. Gordon likes it. There's no debate. <laughs> That's a yes. Take that. Get out of there. Wonderful job, Fred. Right? Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> One of the best desserts I've ever tasted yeah. in this competition. Yeah. And it's such an astute dish. It's thought provoking. Look at that. <laughs> Come on. Drop the plate, hey. man. This is just the start to like my whole life ahead of me, and I just can't believe that it's happening. Wow, what a night. We've given out 19 aprons. Yet again, the bar has been raised. Just one apron remains. It all comes down to the battle. Season 10, the level couldn't be higher. The dishes have been amazing. This is the best auditions we've ever seen in the history over a decade of this competition. Three battle passes, one apron left. May the best home cook win. Guys, it's gonna be, big. It's gonna be incredible. Coming up. Congratulations right. to you, talented 19. You made the cuts. Yes. It's a battle of redemption. Everybody loves a second chance. As three home cooks face off. This is any man's game at this point. It is make it or break it time. Get off. She might cut herself out of this competition. Let's go! For the final spot in the top 20. This was your last chance.
With the auditions now over, 19 aprons have been handed out, and only one last coveted apron remains. <laughs> Congratulations to you, talented 19. You made the cuts. Yeah. But you know there is still one more apron up for grabs. It's time to start the battle round. First up, the person that I gave my battle pass to, Micah. I literally left everything behind to be here. Let's go, Micah! I don't have the support of my family, but I know this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Next up, I gave my battle pass to Charlie. I am only 21 years old, but I do have what it takes to go up against any other cook here. I know my skill set is strong, and I just hope I can show the judges. And finally, I chose Molly. I quit my job. I have changed everything to be here, and I'm ready to start a new chapter in my life. We asked you three to make us one other dish that is worthy of this final white apron. You've got a big second chance to get yourself into the top 20 of the biggest culinary competition anywhere on the planet. You three ready to cook the best dish of your life? Yes, Chef. Always. Yeah. Good. Your 45 minutes start now. <laughs> Got it, Micah. Go through the process. Stay focused. You can do it. Let's go, guys. There's a lot of pressure. It's just the three of us against each other. Only one of us is going to get the apron. It was our first time cooking in front of the judges. Pace yourself. Keep it up, guys. Come on, Micah. Here's the thing, guys. We want to see a vast improvement for that first time round. And I hope that the nerves doesn't get the best of them. It's really important to stay composed and stick to the plan. This is so amazing right now to be here. It's just like, I can't believe that I don't give me another chance. All right, so Molly. Yes. Give me some insight on your dish. OK, so a boneless pork loin with a cilantro sauce. And then I'm doing carrots three ways. Are you going to grill it? I'm what gonna are you going to do? I'm going to pan sear it and finish it in the oven. Finish it in the oven, but pull it out and let that pork rest, OK? okay. Young lady, good luck. All right, thank you so much. Chris Deskin, baby doll. Get it, Micah. Cooking for an apron is a dream come true, especially having a second chance like this. Last time I made churros, but it showed a lack of skill. It's a bloody churro, but I believe in you. To feel his endorsement was really something special. Give us an insight of the dish. I am making chili lime sea bass with cilantro quinoa okay. and stir-fried eggplant and shiitake. Just be careful when it comes together, especially yes, the eggplant. Yes, hey, chef. I'm counting on you, OK? Good luck. Thank you, chef. Nice, Charlie. Good Charlie. technique. Thank you. OK, Charlie, you're blowing us all away with the knife skills. Tell me about the dish. I am making beer-battered fish tacos. Tell me about the beer batter. I have beer, vodka, rice flour, and a pea beer flour. Beer and vodka? That's a bit risky. As long as the vodka doesn't overpower the fish. That took a big chance on you, so you better bring it home, kid. I know it sounds weird, but I want to show my versatility. She's going to do some beer batter with vodka? Vodka. 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 I need to get this fish fried. It's very hard to get rid of that vodka strength and that batter. The beer goes well with the fish, but the vodka. Well, I tell you one thing. If it tastes like a martini straight up, she won't get the white apron. My God, how's the fish doing? I'm about to see. Looking good. Awesome. Nice, Micah. Walk it, man. Yeah. Walk it, walk it. Great job, Micah. Right, Micah. How are we doing? I'm feeling prepared. I really think that I can nail this. Good. You've got the butter frothing beautifully. Skin side down, make sure you baste that fish. And also, you've still got plenty of time. Yes, sure. Hey, young man, don't plate this dish too early. There's elements there that need finesse. Focus. Stay clean. Let's go, guys. Eight minutes remaining. There you go. There go. There we go. Finish strong, guys. Finish strong. Check those tortillas, Chuck. There you go. 
Plenty time, guys, OK? Michael, don't play too early. One of the biggest key components is the plating. I need to make sure that it's perfect. Pork chop looks great, Molly. That's awesome. The one thing that could make or break this for me is if my pork isn't completely there. I'm trying to get at least a 125 or 130. OK, so I'm not there yet. All right, yep, yeah, I'm going to stick that back in. I'm a little worried about my pork. It is make it or break it time, and I don't want to go home. OK, Charlie. Is that the only two tortillas you have? Yes. One small, one's big. Can you at least get them consistent? I'll make a new one. Make them nice and big and do two more. Good luck, Charlie. Three minutes remaining. Focus, Charlie. Now's the time, guys, to start plating. This is do or die for her. She's got to nail these last two tortillas. Come on, Chuck. You got it, girl. Come on. You got it. That's OK. Come on. Get it right. You got an apron on the line. I got it stuck to the freaking thing. She's having all kinds of issues right now. Uh, Get off. Might be in jeopardy of not being able to produce a plate. Wow. Two minutes to go. Come on, guys. You in the game, Charlie. You in the game. Come on, Micah. One of the things that concern me about Micah's dish is that all of that eggplant is kind of cut very clumsily. They're big pieces. And when eggplant is cut too big, it can be dry. 60 seconds remaining, guys. Come on. Last minute. Let's go, guys. Come on. It looks beautiful, Come on, Charlie. Come on, Molly. I am so worried about this pork loin. Hopefully, if it came out right. Finish strong. The tortillas aren't working. I my mind scrambling. 15 seconds. Come on. And that was, I can't actually watch this. Make sure oh, that, that plate is perfect. Great challenge. Great challenge. Finish it strong. I think it shows a variety of techniques. I'm a little worried about my pork cook time. I had to put it back in. Fingers crossed that it came out right. I'm very nervous because the tortillas didn't come out exactly how I wanted them to. I just hope it's good enough to win over the judges. I'm really not a fan of my stir fry. It looks really messy and unsophisticated. I'm just praying that fish saves me. Right, now the moment of truth, and for Joe, Ron, and myself to taste all of your dishes and decide who gets the final apron. Charlie, you're first up. I made beer-battered fish tacos and Asian slaw. You know, I mean, visually, it's hard to overlook the fact that it's misproportioned as far as the size of the fish and then the tortilla. I'm going to disagree with Aron. For me, it looks like a beautiful piece of fish. Just the visual impact, it, it looks good. So there was some talk of vodka in the batter. Did it make it in or not? The vodka made it in the batter. Are you happy with the dish? I'm very happy with the dish. I tasted the fish. It's crunchy and tender. Here we go. I'm desperate to see what the impact the vodka had on the batter. I'm not into the vodka at all. Batter should be crisp. But the slaw is delicious. I'm going to commend you for that. Thank you. You created a legitimate, mature, evolved plate. And I'm very, very glad that I invested my one and only battle card in you. Thank you. Get in there. The next dish we'd like to taste is from you, Molly. Please bring it up. I did a boneless pork loin with uh, cilantro lime sauce, and then I did carrots three ways. I think the last dish you presented 
it was a little bit flat. This one's got up a level. That's a good thing for me. Thank you. When I cut this open, Molly, what are you hoping to see that interior of this chop look like? A nice glistening, a little bit of pink, not overdry, not tough or anything. We shall see, young lady. See how raw that is? That's just a little cool. Here's the thing, Molly, you cook with confidence. Let's get that clear. It's a shame because of the visual impact of the dish has got that wow factor with those rainbow carrots. The big mistake you made tonight is it's undercooked in the middle. But I do appreciate the consistency and the smooth nature of that puree. For Thank sure. you. Right, final dish for scrutiny, Micah. Ginger lime sea bass with quinoa and stir-fried eggplant with shiitake mushrooms. It looks good. Skin looks crispy. Fish was basted beautifully. For me, the rest of the dish is just a little bit amateurish. Mm. Man. Yeah. That's a good one. I'm just wondering, do you have a point of reference? Have you eaten in a starred restaurant and had a piece of fish like this before? No, sir, I've never eaten in a starred restaurant. It's perfect. Thank you, chef. Yeah, let's get one thing clear. You've nailed the fish. It's cooked beautifully. Um, the sad news is that the cabbage and the eggplant's greasy. It's all sort of into cloying, heavy, soggy mess. And some of those eggplants are undercooked. Yeah, I wish the whole thing were at the level of the fish itself. Thank you, Micah. Uh, please give us a moment to discuss. I want this so desperately. I have put so much on the line for this. <sighs> this is tough. The best fried fish and the best pan roasted fish that we've seen in a long time. I want this apron more than I've honestly wanted anything. But the final dish wasn't perfect. Yeah, but I think she shows a lot of promise. I'm disappointed, and I feel like I let myself down. So we have our decision. We have our decision. Yeah. <clears throat> right, uh, let's cut straight to the chase, the moment of truth. It's been a tough enough evening. All three of you should be incredibly proud. Well done. That said, we only have one apron to give out tonight. The person earning that final apron for MasterChef season 10 is... Micah, well done. <laughs> Molly, Charlie, uh, what can I say? Well done, and promise me you'll both keep cooking. Always. Well done, both of you. Thank you. Right, uh, young man, first of all, great job. What a difference. I've never been given a second chance in life. And to have somebody like you stand up for me and believe in me, it means more than you'll ever know. Take tonight's experience and absolutely continue climbing that ladder. Congratulations, well done. Get this on. Hey. Well done. Good job. Uh, get that on, head upstairs. I have dreamt about getting an apron and standing up on that balcony since the time I was nine years old. Yeah! Here we have it. Yeah. The top 20. Wow, for all of you standing up there, trust me, the most incredible journey of your lives starts right now.